I'd like you to take me back to 1965, a time where there were no speakers bureaus, because we had cheap food speakers then. <coughs> there were very few women in business, and Joan Saxon paved the way for a whole new industry. Joan is the most remarkable lady I know, articulate a world champion speaker, passionate, charming, endearing, tenacious, and fun. She's also the most prolific letter writer I've ever known, as anyone who will know her. And along with her husband of 56 years, Dick Saxton, a former Antarctic explorer, she has become our best friend and mentor. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to please join me in a toast to celebrate a very special Australian, Joan Saxton. Staffordshire, 
and I loved poetry and storytelling and dancing and singing. And quite a few groups in, in my class decided that we would, on Saturdays, we'd have a little concert. And so in our back garden at home in Shelton, uh, we had put on a little concert and we charged one penny for the children to come in. So many of them came that we thought, well, goodness me, we put it up to tuppence. <laughs> and suddenly I realized, at the age of five and a half, there's money in it. <laughs> and so time went on and on and on, and I was involved in a world of words. And even when I, in the war time, I put on a khaki uniform, I got on a troop ship with Southeast Asia Command, and no, longer, no sooner arriving on board with the other 22 girls, we, the troops commanding officer lined us up. Well, we thought we were going to go on the top deck and lie in the sun all the way to Bombay. But no, he had other ideas. He said, I feel that these men should hear a woman's voice every day. Therefore, I know there are not enough of you to cover the whole of the troop decks and to talk to them. So I've decided that we're going to have a radio program over the ship's antenna. A record request, a record request program. And he said, now who is going to volunteer? Right then, one of the girls gave me a nudge. His keen blue eyes saw what she did. He called for my army number and brought me to the front and I was it. And so every day there was a program to the troops called Joan to You and all the other girls were going through the record reliably on the ship finding the requests. I have some very amusing letters from soldiers. <laughs> The Sergeant Major McGregor of the 45th Commander Brigade, would you please play Fats Waller singing Your Feet's Too Big? <laughs> of course, we never gave them away to the officers. And we had a very successful program. And from then on, even when I came back home again to England and then went out to Malaya and belonged to the theatre for loving qualities, the words, words, words were somehow a part of me. My first talk ever was Malayan Memories when we came back from Malaya, where we'd been during the emergency because there was a lot of drama then. And then, of course, you know what happens. There'll be other people sitting there who have clubs of their own and suddenly you're going out all around the place. But I had marvelous, marvelous support from the press when I set up the lecture bureau, particularly from the Melbourne Herald, and then again from the Melbourne Age, and you've only got to get in the newspapers and the radio stations start wanting to interview you and then the television want to interview you and so gradually it was built up in 65 onwards and then came the time when i thought well 20 or 21 years i'd like to retire and i thought i'd better put it on the market and my elder son clive who now lives in perth went to have dinner with his wife, Christina, from Scotland, with Winston and Lynette Broadbent. It was marvellous because Winston and Lynette had decided to have a special business. And my Christina said, well, my, my mother-in-law is thinking of putting her business on the market. And Lynette and Winston said, well, we've always been interested in what Joan Saxton is doing. And so we met, we had drinks, the accountants got together, didn't have to put it on the market at all. I had two splendid, brilliant people taking over my baby, the lecture bureau. And I knew it was in very good hands, and seeing all of you today is proof of their brilliance. And so I thank them for doing so wonderfully over all the years.